Hello and welcome to the My Heritage webinar series. I'm Jeff Rasmus and your host, broadcasting to you live from webinar headquarters in Middleton, Idaho. Today we have Tal Ehrlichman, who is with us live at My Heritage headquarters in Or Yehuda, Israel, for his class, An Overview of Important Historical Record Collections. So thanks to Tal and thanks to the more than 1,700 of you from 27 countries around the world for registering for today's live webinar, wherever and whenever you are, glad to have you with us. I'd like to introduce our speaker. Tal Ehrlichman is responsible for SuperSearch, MyHeritage's search engine for historical records. He leads a talented team of developers, QA engineers, and content project managers in charge of improving the research tools and bringing valuable content to users from developing features that simplify the search experience and relevance of search results to building a robust pipeline of new historical collections from around the world. In addition, he recently began to lead the company's SEO efforts. Tal comes from a computer science background specializing in mobile security for BYOD solutions and was part of the Let Mobile team acquired by Ivanti in 2012. Please put together your virtual hands and let's give Tal Ehrlichman a nice warm webinar welcome. Uh, Tal, how are you and welcome to the show. I'm good. Thank you, Jeff. Well, it's nice to have one of uh, one of the guys uh, that, that makes it all work uh, behind the scenes. And it'll be, it'll be fun to learn what you have to teach us here today. Uh, uh, Tal, your screen looks great, and uh, I'm going to go uh, on mute here, and the time's all yours. Thanks again. Thank you, Jeff. Happy to be here with you guys today. Uh, really glad to be here. As Jeff mentioned, yes, I'm, I'm a product manager here at MyHeritage, and I manage our content team. My team is in charge of publishing uh, new content and responsible for MyHeritage search engine for historical records called SuperSearch. Uh, um, so before we dive into an overview of important historical record collections, let's begin uh, with a quick intro to my heritage and, and to the SuperSearch product for those of you that are less uh, familiar with it. So my heritage was built as a platform uh, to satisfy everything that genealogists want and need. Uh, we basically see the family tree as the most important thing in genealogy. So we work hard to provide the friendliest, easy to use, and best looking uh, family tree editors. As some of you know, we provide them as software. Our software is called Family Tree Builder, and it is free. We provide them on, on our website to use through any browser. And we provide them as, as mobile apps, also free uh, to use on uh, mobile devices. The core unit uh, on my heritage, as you can see on the screen, is a family site. Anyone can start it for free and add one or more family trees in, into it. Then you can add photos and documents and videos and invite family members and people you care about uh, to your family tree, to your family site. Everything on your site can be made private to your family members or public. But even when public, and this, this is important, information on living people remains hidden from other people. When you buy a subscription on MyHeritage, you get unlim unlimited capacity and more features. And all your family members benefit from it, not just you. And this is a concept that is a bit different than, than most other uh, genealogy websites. Um, Besides that, we have tools and content for research, and they include a search engine called SuperSearch that allows you to search through uh, currently over 9 billion historical records to date. Um, and automatic matching tools, our, uh, some of you probably know them already. Uh, our tree to tree matching uh, technology, we call it smart matches, and our tree to record matching is called, as you can imagine, record matches. Every individual added to your tree is automatically matched to all trees on my heritage and to all the historical records. When matches are found, we will notif notify you through the platform and by email. So you can review the match, confirm it, and extract uh, the info to your tree. We also have another technology we call instant discoveries, which lets you uh, import 
a whole branch from another user's tree into your uh, tree instantly. By only uh, matching one person, you can uh, import an entire branch from another tree. And of course, uh, added in uh, the end of 2016, uh, we have MyHeritage DNA, uh, which already includes this database, includes about 1.5 million people uh, that were DNA tested. Um, we provide uh, an ethnicity estimate report to find your ethnic origins and DNA matches in which uh, your DNA is being matched to our entire uh, database. And I guess uh, most of you heard about uh, the wonderful success stories uh, that were uh, in, in many uh, uh, news uh, items all over uh, the world, mostly in the US. So in this session, we will focus on super search and we'll spotlight uh, some important and new uh, record collections that were added in, in the last uh, few months. We will see how they can be uh, best leveraged for your own uh, family research. So let's begin talking about super search by lo looking at a few numbers. We have more than 9.1 billion records to date searchable via super search. Uh, 4 billion family tree profiles, out of them, 4, 4 billion are family tree profiles uh, that mostly come from my heritage family trees, which are more than 2 uh, billion, uh, almost 3 billion actually. Uh, the Genie family tree and family search that we have uh, a partnership with them in which every individual that is added to a tree on family search is also uh, searchable through MyHeritage. Um, besides that, we have 1.2 billion census records. Um, we have a full run of the entire US census and also all the available England and Wales censuses. Soon we will complete all the Danish censuses as well, and we will talk about it a bit later. We have 170 million pages of free text records, among them a lot of newspapers, mostly from the US and Australia. Uh, this year we are planning to publish much more from Europe as well. Uh, and we have an amazing collection of books uh, that you can also uh, search. More than 50 million records are added every month. And this is uh, quite a, a big number. It includes also the, the family tree profiles that are uh, being synced uh, all the time, but th that's a relatively big number. Um, and our users are performing more than 15 million searches every month on, on SuperSearch, uh, just to, to show you the, the, the big amounts. Every individual added to a family tree is being matched with all the records we have on MyHeritage and will continue to be matched to every new collection we will publish in the future. These matches give a great value uh, to users and we can see this by looking at the amazing number uh, of more than 4 million uh, record matches that are actually being reviewed by, every, uh, by users and confirmed by them. Uh, like we are creating much more matches uh, than this number, but this number shows the, the matches that are actually being confirmed uh, by our users. So for those of you that are less familiar with my heritage search tools, I will do a very, very quick uh, intro to super search uh, uh, just to get us all on the same uh, page. Um, so SuperSearch was introduced in 2012 and has almost 5 billion records uh, when it was launched after the acquisition of uh, World Vital, Vital Records. Since then, we are working every day uh, basically to, to grow our database searchable records and we believe that next year we will already cross uh, the 10 billion mark, uh, which is a very important mark for us. Okay, let's go for a second uh, take a look at a quick uh, demo from the website. I have a, a few slides on that as well, but I always like to, to show it from, from the website itself. So this is my uh, personal uh, family site, and we are now under the Research tab. So under the Research tab, when you click uh, Research or click Search All Records, you will get to this page uh, to Super Search. And what you can see here is, first of all, the basic uh, search form uh, for doing the most basic search and, and really uh, start your, your uh, family research. Uh, you only need a few fields 
you click search and, and you can begin. Uh, uh, you can use uh, first name and last name, year of birth, place, and, uh, and use keywords. Um, I will talk about it more in a second. Just a second, I lost my cursor, okay. Um, and also, uh, we have the advanced search in which you have much, much more power and as uh, more um, uh, specialized uh, users and, and, and genealogists, they, they mostly like to use this uh, mode of search in which you can add any type of, uh, of life event like birth or death or marriage. Um, and you can add as many uh, events as you want. Uh, you can add relatives, uh, like father, mother, spouse, and uh, children. And of course, you have the flexibility uh, to choose uh, what kind of, of search you, you, you would like to make, whether you want uh, the place to match optional or to, to be required, uh, how flexible the date will be. And also uh, on names, of course, uh, in case you, you know that your name is, is very unique and is only spelled in, in a certain way, uh, I would recommend to, to search it exact, exact uh, search. However, uh, on some cases, uh, we will have uh, initials and we will have middle names and the name can appear also in, in a middle name. Uh, so uh, matching on similar names might be better. And also in cases where you have uh, names that uh, are like uh, Bob and Robert or, uh, or, or uh, other uh, such, uh, such uh, synonyms. This is useful uh, as well. What else do we have here? So on the, on the right side, you can see uh, the categories that we have. Uh, we have uh, the, the collection uh, catalog that we'll talk about it later. Uh, and we have uh, the, the top categories uh, that most of the users like to search inside, uh, it's, it can be census and voters list, uh, family trees, birth, marriage and death, photos, and so on. We have all the categories listed on, on the right. And we also have subcategories. So for example, if you only wanna search the US census, you can click on the US census and you will get to a, a search page that is dedicated uh, to search in the entire US census. And on the right, you can see uh, the list of, uh, of censuses that we have. Some of them, it's not actually everything. Um, if I'll just get into, for example, the 1940 census, uh, you'll be able to do a more uh, specific search that is relevant only to the fields that were indexed in the 1940 census. So let's say you, you know that someone should appear in the 1940 census, I would encourage you to perform the search uh, inside uh, the, the search page of, of the 1940 census. Um, for example, you can see a sample record that we try to, to attach to every new collection that we're adding. Um, here you can see in the, the record of John Kennedy, uh, the US uh, president. And down below, uh, besides uh, the details about his residence and, and his uh, family, and his entire household, uh, you'll be able to, to browse the image uh, itself and found, find his uh, specific uh, record. Down below, you will have a summary of his entire household with links, of course, to the record pages of all the other uh, family members. Below that, you always have the, the option to save the record uh, to uh, your tree. Let's say uh, this record is, is of someone in your tree, you can save this record and I will show it uh, a bit later. Uh, there is also an option in case you found uh, some, uh, some uh, transcription error, you can suggest an alternative uh, by clicking this and selecting uh, the person that uh, was transcribed incorrectly and you can suggest an alternative for this person. Let's go back. Uh, Besides that, uh, we have also the ability to search records by location. Uh, so for example, if you want to search all the Canadian uh, records, you can search it here by clicking All Canada or choosing a, a specific uh, province. And then uh, the search will be performed only on Canadian 
collections and family trees with uh, uh, Canadian uh, info. Let's do a quick search before we continue, just to show you the experience of the search. So let's say I'm searching for John Williams that was uh, born in 1923. And I'll hit search. So you, you'll be able to see a list of, uh, of results. And let's say I'm only interested in census and voters lists. I can filter it uh, in the left uh, side. And I know that this uh, John Williams that I'm looking for uh, should only appear in a US census because he was a US resident. I can go on and continue drilling down. And in some cases, I will know also, for example, the mother's name. Hope it will load. Doesn't want to load. Okay, let's let's continue. Sorry for the for the bad connection, probably uh, because of the webinar, but in just one second. And you can drill down further into uh, other uh, uh, collections until you find uh, the person you're looking for. You can do it like that by refining your search in, in the left panel, or you can do it by uh, adding more life events or more relatives, as I explained uh, earlier. Let's go back uh, to our presentation. So, okay, after uh, we, we did a quick intro uh, to Super Search, let's uh, discuss uh, a few highlighted uh, historical record collections uh, that were published in the last uh, year. And let's begin with the US Yearbooks Name Index, 1890 till 1979. So yearbooks, as you know, are fun. Apart from factual data, like where our ancestors lived or, or when they were born, we can also learn how they looked like. What were their hobbies? What did their friends uh, say about them? Who did they take to the prom? Were they into football or chess club or any other uh, special activities? You can really learn a lot about them uh, from, by looking at yearbooks. And especially in the U.S., because in, in the U.S. It's, it's a tradition to use yearbooks um, almost in every school uh, throughout the entire uh, uh, 20th century. So we can find a lot of valuable uh, info there. In this project of U.S. yearbooks, we indexed uh, 253,000 yearbooks from across the U.S. and uh, also some American schools outside the U.S., uh, like in Mexico and Canada and Europe. And we built a name index of almost 290 million names. In the collection, you can find elementary schools, high schools, and even small number of kindergartens. Uh, this is basically the largest yearbook collection in existence. Uh, I, I never heard yet of, of a larger uh, uh, yearbook collection. And, and it's also the largest uh, structured name index of, uh, of yearbooks, which is, uh, which is interesting. This collection uh, is very unique since we have uh, used uh, proprietary algorithms that we wrote um, to create this name index from free text OCR uh, data. O OCR is optical character recognition. Uh, these are big machines that uh, we scan their pages and get the, the output uh, that was uh, digitally typed on, on those uh, pages. Um, so it, Instead of, of doing a standout uh, a King project that uh, normally the, the biggest uh, genealogy vendors uh, do with, with several uh, companies, um, we decided that si since it's such an immense uh, um, set of, of records, it will take even up to two years uh, 
uh, keying everything manually and will cost a lot of, uh, of money. So um, our mot motivation here was to be able to index it in, in a much uh, faster time, but in, in, in the same uh, quality. So our algorithm were adapted to identifying names in yearbooks and also in some cases to understand what profile picture is linked to each name and you can see here especially on this screen you can see two two different uh, examples so Meryl Streep uh, the actress that you most of you know her uh, you see her name uh, is just below her profile picture and uh, and on the other uh, page you can see Sally Field I think uh, appearing uh, in a, in a grid-like uh, page, and her name is listed on the side. And what uh, part of the scope of this project uh, was to link between names and and faces, and knowing uh, what faces be, is linked to what to what name. Um, when possible, estimated birth years were inferred for some of the students to improve uh, record matching. We did this by uh, basically algorithmically deducing to what school grade the person belongs to. If he was in the senior class, the junior, fourth grade, uh, or, or freshman, for example. Um, and according to that, uh, we, we were able to determine uh, the estimated uh, birth year of the, of the person because we know uh, the year uh, that the yearbook uh, was published in. The biggest benefit from, from this work, as you can imagine, uh, is, uh, is to provide much higher quality uh, record matches and to make this collection uh, much easily uh, searchable. So, this is how uh, the collection search page looks like. Uh, you can search using birth year or yearbook year, uh, school, school location. Um, school is actually the school name, of course. Um, let's look at an example. Let's say I'm looking for a Peter Johnson that was born in 1939 and went to school in Wisconsin. So this is how I will search for him. I entered all the details. When I hit search, these are the results that I'll get. Uh, on the top left corner, you can always see the search uh, that you were making. Uh, by the way, we're going to, to change this component soon uh, to be able to, to do the, the search, the, the editing of the search uh, and performing additional searches from this window instead of going back to the, to the other window. Um, it will be uh, published in like a month or two. Um, so anyway, uh, you can you can see the results that came back uh, from this collection. Uh, you see the th top three results uh, from Milton High School and Hayward High School and Jensville High School, and so on. Uh, and what fields do we have there? So, first of all, we have the birth uh, that is implied, uh, and I will talk about it in a second, uh, which is around 1939. Uh, the school is Milton High School, school location uh, in Rock County, Wisconsin. Uh, United States, and the yearbook year is 1956. Another interesting uh, thing you can see, we have combined all pages within the same yearbook in which Peter Johnson appeared in and attached them to the record. So in the first result, you can see that he appeared in two pages by seeing the, the two uh, images on top uh, of the record, this image and this image. Um, it will help you basically find all occurrences of the name Peter Johnson in the entire book without manually se searching for them. This is very useful to, see, to know if the person you were looking for is, is this person or someone else. When clicking on the first result, we will get into this record page. We can see details like school name, location, yearbook year that we already discussed. Um, and our school grade uh, detection algorithm was built to, to understand that this Peter Pete Johnson, as you can see, Peter Pete Johnson on the, on the image viewer, Pete was his, um, was his nickname, was attending the senior class in 1956. We implied a circa birth year based on the fact he was in the senior class, approximately 17 years old as a senior, 
like seniors are mo most mostly between 17 and 18 year old in 1956. Therefore, he was born approximately in 1939. As you can see in the image, we have added highlighting in purple of the name of the person. So right when, when you'll open the, the record page, you'll be able to identify the person uh, that, uh, that you were searching for. And, and you won't need uh, to go through the entire page and scan it yourself to find uh, who, is, who is this, uh, wh where is the, the image of, of the person. Let's examine uh, for a second the record page on the site to understand how exactly we deduced that he was a senior in 1956. And let me copy here just a second something. and paste it here. So, you can see the record page of Peter Johnson, as I showed you before. And, as you can see, nothing is mentioned here about him being a senior. So how did we understand that this guy is a senior, is in, in, a, in a senior class? If we'll go back to page 17, we'll see additional people from, probably from his class, let's see. Also on page 16 and 15 and 14. And on page 13, we see that this is sort of a cover page uh, for the senior section in the book. Uh, we basically deduced that in page 18, uh, the, you can find seniors uh, based on, on what we found uh, on page 13. And this, ki this kind of, uh, of uh, deducing uh, of, uh, of a grade for a person is not something we did for every record, uh, because sometimes it's really, really, really hard uh, to, to know that. Uh, but for a significant amount of the records uh, that you will find in this collection, uh, we were able to do it. And we inferred it only in cases where we were uh, very certain that we are doing this uh, correctly. So, let's go back to our presentation. Another uh, part you can see here is uh, the, the all occurrences uh, section. The all occurrences section, you can see other pages Peter Johnson appeared in and view uh, the page by clicking on them. So basically we give you links to all the other pages uh, this guy appears in. So after I'll click uh, page number 51 here and we'll open uh, the full screen mode this is what I will see. On the top left corner, you'll be able to, to browse to all pages where this name appears in. And in this uh, specific image, you can see Peter Johnson as a football player. Also, uh, you can see here that his uh, name is highlighted. Another section you can find is the related yearbook section that I find very, very useful and I think uh, uh, it's worth uh, talking about. In case we have other yearbooks from this school uh, in the plus minus five years uh, from the, the current yearbook, we will show a link to search those books. In this example, we have books from Milton High School in 1954 and, and 1953. In, so basically, if, if in 1956, uh, the record is from 1956, uh, we will look for all books that we have five years earlier and five years after. And if we find anything, we will show them here. The reason uh, is that we want uh, to allow, uh, allow you guys e easily to search uh, for other records of this person in other yearbooks. Um, so uh, in 1956, Peter is in the senior class. So in 1954, we would expect to find him as a sophomore and in 1953, he should be uh, a freshman. Let's see uh, if we can find him. So after I, I clicked uh, on what you see in green on 1954 and refined the search uh, 
to be searching only his name, Peter Johnson, um, you will get to this uh, search result page and you will see one result for Peter Johnson. In most, in most schools, only the senior classes had profile images for each student. In the junior classes, you will normally find people appearing in group photos or sport team photos. So it seems like this is uh, the case here as well. And let's look at this record for a second. So you can see here a group photo uh, from the football team. And on line, uh, on row three, we can see Peter Johnson uh, appearing. Let's zoom in a bit. And we can see Peter Johnson, uh, he is listed one uh, person before the last, and this is the guy uh, enlarged a bit uh, here on the right. And this is the same Peter Johnson that we saw earlier, uh, just a bit younger. Okay, let's see if we can find him also in the 1953 yearbook as a freshman. So this is uh, the search results for the 1953 yearbook. And we see here even a richer result uh, with six different uh, photos he allegedly appears in. And when I see a lot of images, uh, I tend to be suspicious because especially for a freshman, it's not that likely that he will be mentioned in so many uh, pages along the book. Um, so it's always worthwhile to look at each uh, specific image to see if it's it's really him, it's not him, whether you can get uh, new data and new information about uh, the person from the from the page. Um, but in some cases, in, and, and most commonly in very common names, for example, uh, a John Smith or even a Peter Johnson, it's, it's likely that in the same school, there will be two Peter Johnsons um, uh, in the same year. So uh, this record actually uh, can show uh, pages where there are a uh, few people uh, named Peter jo Johnson. So let's look at, at this record. Um, and here it's very easy to, to recognize him again. And this is the same Peter Johnson we saw earlier, but uh, younger here. As you can see, we didn't uh, 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 infer here a, a grade or, or a class. I'm not sure how it's, it's correct to say that um, for, uh, for Peter Johnson, uh, apparently because we didn't know that uh, it's the first freshman class uh, on this page or the pages uh, before. Uh, here you can see that if I'll scroll back to one page earlier, you, you'll see the reason why it was uh, so hard uh, to know that uh, that uh, the next page is talking about a freshman uh, class. That's because it, it wasn't listed in the title. It was listed as, as part of, of the text and it was uh, not, uh, we didn't have enough confidence to say that uh, for sure that uh, this guy is in the freshman class. Here, Peter is mentioned in the basketball team. So now we know that as a freshman, he actually played uh, played basketball in 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 the school basketball team. And you can see see in green over there, it's a bit small. Uh, six fr freshmen, uh, and one of them is is Peter Johnson. He's not appearing in the image uh, above, but he's mentioned in the text. We can also find a group photo. And all of these are from the record that we just saw from this one. It's, it's the images down here below. So we can also find a group photo uh, of his entire freshman class. We can learn that he was in the student council as a freshman. You can see uh, over here in green, he's mentioned in the student council. Okay, just a second. And here, yes, you can see that row four, this is Peter Johnson appearing again. That's his name. So really like a lot of details that you can get only by looking at uh, different pages and, and you can really get into the atmosphere of what, what he went through uh, during his, his time in high school. Let's say we didn't find what uh, we were looking for. 
I suggest to give it a try in the free text version of the collection. So what we did uh, is we indexed the OCR text from all yearbooks as a separate collection uh, that is is more similar to book collections or to newspaper collections that we will see soon. Um, and it's very useful to try it in order to find names that we fail to extract into our name index. It's also more efficient for finding context-based keywords since we search the entire text on the page. Um, and that's the big benefit here because when I search for a keyword in a, in a free text collection, um, the, we look for, for a, a correlation and, 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 and the name appearing uh, closer to the, to the keyword. And you can see here, for example, when I search for Peter Johnson, 1939, and the keyword is football, you can see the results, uh, first three results mentioning uh, some Peter Johnson uh, along with, with the football uh, on the same uh, page. And actually the third record is from uh, the same school uh, that we saw earlier in the other collection. So again, to understand the difference, uh, this is uh, another version of the same data set. Just here, we indexed it as a free text collection. Uh, you can see 36 million pages, which means 36 million records in 253,000 yearbooks. Um, and on the other version, we had a name index, which every uh, searchable name is a record. And over there, we have 290 uh, million names extracted from the same uh, da data set. So basically, it's another interface uh, to, to do a more uh, exhaustive uh, search. So here you can see uh, what we just discussed, that we found a page where Peter Johnson is mentioned as a football player, and uh, you see all the relevant keywords highlighted. So let's do a summary of this, uh, of this example of yearbooks um, and, a few, and a few tips. So use estimated birth year or yearbook year to narrow down the search. That's always important. Uh, related yearbooks are very helpful to find additional records of the same person and see how he grew up from a freshman to a senior. Examine all pages related to the record. Sometimes you will find valuable information on other pages. Uh, and you saw an example for that. If, in case you didn't find what you were looking for, uh, you should try searching uh, the free text version of the collection. And in the free text collection, we should use keywords like cheerleader, chess, even his nickname. Like if we would have, uh, and I could do this uh, example, uh, search for Peter Pete Johnson, we knew that Pete was his nickname, uh, which is for most Peters, I think uh, their nickname is Pete. Uh, we can do, we can, we can find him easily in, in the free text version. Another motivation for the free text version is that sometimes we just, weren't able to, because of the quality of the OCR, to infer good enough uh, all the names uh, from, uh, from uh, the, the book. And it's another option to try and search for them um, in a free text version. OK, let's move on. US newspapers. So I would like to introduce to you our US Newspapers project. Uh, we have been working in the last year or so to grow significantly the number of newspapers we have on SuperSearch. Uh, since we got a lot of feedbacks from you guys and from other uh, users uh, that uh, found those uh, newspaper uh, collections very, very valuable, and over the last year, uh, we published uh, 13 U.S. newspaper collections with more than 23 million records. And when I say records, I mean pages. Um, it's worth mentioning that different genealogy vendors count free text records in a different way. Some count them the average number of articles per page, uh, which is, um, the, there are researchers saying it's seven, and multiply it in the number of pages. Some rely on another research that uh, a page uh, in a newspaper uh, have on average about 17 names. And they mu multiply this number uh, uh, by the number of pages they have. 
So um, sometimes when you see on other websites, uh, 300 million uh, newspaper records, um, it's important to know if th these are pages or other way to count uh, those pages. Um, some summary lie, uh, sorry. Um, we, uh, as I, I started mentioning, are a bit more conservative and we count one record to be one page. All the new newspapers uh, that we publish are being OCR'd in our lab in Lehigh, uh, Utah. Um, and we have uh, quite a nice process there for, uh, for OCRing uh, a lot of, uh, of newspapers and books. And we even build a process to fix uh, common mistakes in this OCR process. Uh, for example, uh, in many cases, uh, a three uh, gets mixed with an E and vice versa. So uh, what we do is we look statistically at the most common mistakes uh, we see among many, many pages of, of newspapers, and we try to fix uh, the most common uh, mistakes to, to basically improve uh, the, the quality of, uh, of names we have there. During uh, the upcoming year, we plan to publish much more newspapers uh, from the US, from almost every state, and from Europe as well. Uh, to understand the value in newspapers, uh, I would like to show you guys an example from our recently uh, published collections. So, recently um, I was trying to help a friend with his family research uh, and I really thought that it would be a, an interesting use case to show you guys today. So my friend's great-grandfather's uncle was called Roscoe Stevens, and he died in 1945. He died in a town called Brunswick. My friend, uh, he didn't really know in which state it was, unfortunately. He only knew uh, the name Brunswick from, his, uh, from something his aunt, I think, she told him uh, at some point. And we had no knowledge about his remains besides the fact he had a daughter named Isabel. We knew there was some tragedy around his death. Uh, and this was a, sort of a, a rumor in the family uh, that, that it, it was possibly involving a fire. Uh, but we didn't know that for sure. So we began searching. Uh, and one of the first things we did was to find in which states there was a town called Brunswick. And you can see it here on the screen, even from a simple search in, in Google Maps. Um, we found uh, at least five states uh, with a town called uh, Brownswick in the US. Um, we didn't know she's from the US. We tried uh, various general searches uh, and they didn't give us much. They yielded many results, but none seemed relevant and it was hard to filter them out. Uh, we first tried to do a general search as I showed you earlier, and then we tried uh, searching with a daughter named Isabel. Um, but we, we couldn't find anything that was interesting uh, enough. And the last clue we had was a family story uh, about a, trage a tragedy around his death, uh, around this, this uh, fire uh, that he was involved in. And then I, I was trying to think, and then we, we were discussing it, uh, what we can do uh, with this clue. So sometimes there is a cause of death mentioned in death certificates, as I guess some of you know. However, it's mostly not indexed for many reasons, uh, but most genealogy vendors are not indexing a cause of death, so it's not searchable. So we tried looking, uh, narrowing down only uh, to look at death certificates, but we didn't really find anything. And then I, I remember that we just recently published a few newspaper collections uh, and went to see uh, whether some of them were from the, the states we found Brunswick to be in. So for some of these states, we already released newspapers uh, apparently, uh, like Maine, Ohio, and Georgia. Uh, these are states that uh, we released uh, newspapers from in the last uh, few months. I thought it's possible that if the cause of death was something tragic, 
that we will find it in a, in a local newspaper or mentioned somehow uh, in, a, in a newspaper. It can be some death notice or, or, or there was uh, a bigger chance uh, to find it uh, in a newspaper. Also, Roscoe Stevens is not the most common name. It's not like searching for a, for a John Smith or, or a John Williams. Um, and we thought that there is a slight chance that if we'll find a good combination of words, uh, we, we can get uh, to, to some clue about, about this guy. So we tried to search his name in a 1945 uh, publication. Uh, and this is what, what you see here on the screen is the newspaper uh, category search page. You can search by first name and, and last name, publication title, publication date, uh, the place of publication even, and uh, keywords. We didn't search for Brunswick in the, in the publication place field since it could be found uh, in a newspaper that was published uh, in a nearby town or, or city. So we didn't think that necessarily Brunswick would be the, the publication place. As, as you can see, instead we use the keyword uh, Brunswick since if we find a, a death notice, it will probably mention where the person died. So that was, uh, was uh, an attempt that, that we made uh, to, to use this, uh, this clue about Brunswick. So, we made the search for Roscoe Stevens, publication date 1945, and the keywords Brunswick, as, as you can see on the left. As you can see, our search engine highlights uh, the search terms in the results, uh, like I showed you guys uh, earlier in, in the yearbooks example. Um, always, uh, results that have the, the name close to the keywords will rank higher. This is why uh, smart usage of the keyword field uh, in this case, Brunswick can be very helpful. Um, so you, you can see here, if you if you look at the first four results, already in the fourth result, we don't have uh, the name Brunswick mentioned. We have it only uh, in the top three results uh, mentioned relatively close to the name Roscoe Stevens, which is very very interesting. So let's start uh, with the third result. We see here, uh, blah, 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 Roscoe Stevens burned in Brunswick home. Brunswick Roscoe Stevens was reported in fair condition. Hmm, that seems to be interesting. So uh, this is, uh, we clicked on the record and this is a record from the Sun Journal, uh, January 23, 1945. And uh, I enlarged uh, the, the specific part on the right. So uh, let's read this article. Roscoe Stevens burned in Brunswick home. Brunswick Roscoe Stevens was reported in fair condition at the Brunswick Hospital Monday, suffering from second and third degree burns received about midnight Sunday when his home on the Old Stage Road was completely destroyed by fire. Interesting. The blaze is believed to have started from an overturned kerosene lamp. Fire Chief Harold Nickerson of the Brunswick Fire Department estimated the damage on the two-story house at approximately a thousand dollars. That's some damage. So we found we did find a Roscoe Stevens who was suffering second and third degree burns due to a fire caught in his place in a town called Brunswick in Maine. This is a newspaper from Maine, if I didn't mention that. Um, we don't know that our Roscoe Stevens is from Maine, uh, but this looks relatively close enough to, to pursue this lead. We did have at least two other uh, relevant results, if you remember, in the previous page. Uh, let's see if we have more info in other news article uh, from the same time frame. Let's see what we have there. So as I said, with newspaper articles that describe an event, it's always good to search uh, for additional records uh, coming from the same time period. Because uh, a, a tragic event or, or an event of, of death um, might be reported in, in different newspapers and around uh, uh, different time periods um, within a few weeks if there was some involvement. So maybe additional information was reported later. And yes, we can see here that um, 
first, first we looked at the third result from January 23, and now uh, we can see two other results, one from February 26 and one from February 24. Uh, these are one month later, one from the Sun Journal and the other one from Lewiston Evening Journal. So Roscoe Stevens, Brunswick, Roscoe Stevens, 71. Th Saturday morning at the blah, 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 Brunswick Hospital from Burns, received about a month ago when his home burned. He has been receiving, okay. So that's a report one month later about uh, an incident that sounds like the same incident uh, we were looking at. So this record uh, from the Sun Journal one month later, February 26, I clicked on the second result that we just saw here. And um, you can see uh, the publication place is the same place. It was a daily newspaper and uh, the text that we just saw. And let me enlarge it and read it to you. Roscoe Stevens, Brunswick Roscoe Stevens, 71, died Saturday morning at the Brunswick Hospital from Burns, received about a month ago when his home burned. He has been receiving treatment at the hospital since that time. Mr. Stevens was born at Winslow, April 11, 1874, the son of Alfred and Pamela John Stevens, and came to Brunswick when a young man. Several years ago, he retired. Surviving are two daughters, Isabel Truziani. Isabel Truziani, if you guys remember, we said uh, we had a lead about a daughter named Isabel. And this could definitely be his daughter, Isabel Truziani from Brunswick and Helen Goslin uh, from Gloucester. Three grandchildren and three nephews and several cousins. And down below, there's something to, that looks like a, a death notice in Brunswick, February 23, Roscoe B. Stevens, age 70, funeral from the Laws Funeral Home, 29, mm -hmm, a bit hard to read, Monday, 2 p.m., entombment in Pine Grove Cemetery, Brunswick. So, um, this article actually proves his death. Uh, unfortunately, and gives us valuable info about his uh, his family. Um, let's see what we learned about him and his family. So we have a few a few details here. Uh, the death, February 24, 1945, Brunswick, Maine, burial in Pine Grove Cemetery, Brunswick, Maine, birth, April 11, 1874, in Winslow. Uh, his father was Alfred Stevens, mother, Pamela John Stevens, uh, daughters, Isabel Prusiani born Stevens and Helen Goslin, that was also born Stevens. We also have some knowledge about more uh, distant family, um, three unknown grandchildren and three nephews, several cousins. This can, we use that definitely uh, later if we want to expand this, the research on this uh, part of the family. But you can see only by looking at this, uh, how one uh, article led to another and and how we could uh, find uh, relevant information about his death that proves his death and uh, and gives us much more details to continue uh, the family research uh, from his side if i'll scroll down below uh, in this record record page as i showed you earlier there's the save record button so what you should do in this case is click save record and then uh, search for the person that appears on your family tree. Roscoe Stevens appeared in my friend's family tree. Um, and you will select him, his name Roscoe Stevens, and you will get to this page. Uh, on the left side, you will see uh, in your tree, uh, Roscoe Stevens and the details that we already knew about him which are only the name of the daughter and uh, the death that was in 1945 in Brunswick, some, some state. Uh, and on the right, we can see the article. Uh, what you can see here is the, is the extract, what we call the extract page. So in this case, since it's a, it's a newspaper article, uh, you will not, not be able to, to extract each field. You will need to do it manually uh, by yourself. 
in a, in a, in a structured or, or in a record coming from, from an index uh, in, in another collection like a census or birth record, you will be able to, to, act, to take uh, the info to your tree by clicking a button. Here, we will need to, to type it uh, manually, what we learned from the article. So I suggest normally either to open, uh, click here and open again uh, the image to copy everything or write yourself on the side on some note uh, all the details that you find uh, in order to uh, add them to the family tree. And I added here everything that, that I could add. Um, and also later I added the, the uh, the other family members that I just uh, learned about, like the father, mother, and the additional daughter. Okay. So to summarize this example of use uh, newspapers, always try newspaper search in case you have additional info about special event uh, your relative was part of. In our case, with Roscoe Stevens is the fire he was caught in. Um, use the keyword search field, try different keywords, that's always important, uh, and we saw that I think already both in yearbooks and in newspapers. If you know a name of a close relative, try to search it too in the keywords field. Um, so for example, if in, in this case I would have tried to search Isabel uh, instead of Brunswick, I might have gotten to the same result eventually because uh, as you can see here, Isabel is mentioned relatively close to the name Roscoe St Stevens, sorry. Uh, it's not too close, uh, but it, it would definitely appear in the first page of the results and you can try it yourself. Um, if you know a place of residence, uh, try focus search in, in relevant collections. Okay, uh, so if, if you know uh, that a person lived in, in some specific town or specific city, uh, try looking in our site or other sites uh, that have newspapers for uh, dedicated collections uh, that only uh, show um, newspapers published in this specific uh, city or town. Because uh, sometimes, you know, not everyone is, is famous and not everyone will be mentioned in, in a very big uh, newspapers necessarily. Always look for additional articles. If the event was important enough to be mentioned in a newspaper, there could be other newspapers reporting it too. Uh, and we saw that also in this example. And of course, uh, when you find found something interesting, save the record to your tree. You will have a citation, which is always great. Uh, and you'll be able uh, to to get all the information uh, from this, uh, from this uh, record that you found. Okay, let's continue uh, to other uh, interesting collections. Sorry. So apart from uh, newspapers and yearbooks that we already discussed, we have other collections from other countries that we gave a lot of focus for during this year. We have published recently some interesting Danish censuses and also we made an important update uh, to our large uh, church records collection. And what you can see on the screen is the Denmark uh, uh, search page where you can search the entire uh, collections uh, from Denmark, entire uh, records that we have. So uh, let's begin with church records. Our Denmark church records collection is uh, spanning from the, the 16th century to the 19th century. For those of you who don't know, um, and don't have uh, Danish roots or, or Nordic roots. Uh, in Denmark, the church is state supported uh, as it was designated in the 1849 constitution. It's interesting that in 18, sorry, in 1984, almost 92% of all Danes were members of the church. Therefore, I guess um, you already realize that those with Dane ancestry will find this collection very, very useful as it covers almost the entire population of the country in a very, very large uh, year span. This is a great uh, set of records. Um, so a bit about the history of those uh, church records. In 1645, uh, all the priests in, in the church were required to keep parish records. 
Uh, which means birth, baptism, confirmations, uh, move in, move out, marriages, burials. Um, and in, in 1814, uh, almost uh, 160 years later, standardized forms uh, were adopted and priests were required to create a second copy to be sent to the Lutheran administrative authority. Um, so they kept one copy for, for themselves, for, for the church, and, and the second copy they sent to the Lutheran uh, administrative authority. Church records are extremely important for Danish research uh, as vital events, as you can imagine. Virtually every individual uh, who lived in Denmark during the time period covered uh, in this collection uh, were recorded in these parish registers uh, or church books. Another reason church records are very useful is also because in most record types, uh, the event date, for example, birth, marriage, death, uh, were documented with exact dates. And this goes back all the way till the 16th uh, century. So not only for the more recent uh, records, but also for, for the older uh, records. As you know, this is very different than census records that only have an inferred uh, birth year uh, in most cases. In March, we added 18.7 million records uh, to this collection. Most of uh, the new records are from 1576 until 1814. So from the earlier uh, days and from uh, older times, we didn't have this year span before. So if you have a uh, family uh, from Denmark, uh, you should check this one out. The collection now has more than 48 million uh, records in total. Okay, let's talk about other uh, uh, collections from Denmark. Uh, we have the census records. Uh, so national censuses uh, were conducted in, uh, in those years uh, that you can see on, uh, on the screen. Uh, we have, th there were 18 censuses uh, in total, uh, and we'll soon discuss uh, one exception uh, for that. So together with our partner in Denmark, the Danish National Archives, we have already published all existing national censuses except for 1787, 1801, and 1940, which we soon released too. Um, so we published so far th 35, 35.6 million records and 5.4 million uh, will be coming uh, very soon. Uh, so we have only those collections in blue uh, that are still uh, remaining, um, but they are in progress. On the right side, you can see the collections uh, that were recently published from Denmark. That's, uh, the censuses, uh, both 1834, 1840, and 1845, also, uh, the Denmark Church Records uh, collection I just mentioned, that was published, uh, the, the update was published in March. And uh, the 1835 Denmark census, uh, which is a bit unique. It's a bit unique because uh, it only listed the population of the duchies of Schleswig and Holstein. I hope I'm pronouncing them correctly. These are two provinces uh, on the north of Germany today. Uh, you can see on the map, in between Denmark and Germany. So Denmark uh, was engaged in, in two wars uh, to retain control of the duchies of Schleswig and Holstein. Uh, the first Schleswig war, which they won in 1852, and the second Schleswig war uh, was 20 years later. And eventually, uh, in this war, the, the Danes were defeated by the Austrians and Prussians and lost these provinces. Why am I telling you this? Uh, first, because it's interesting. And second, uh, because um, since today, this area is a part of Germany, those with German ancestry might find these, this collection uh, very useful as well. So what we did is we indexed all place names in this collection, both in Denmark and in Germany to ease searching and improve our record matching. So if you will search them as a German uh, records or as uh, Danish records, uh, you'll be able to find in both uh, cases. 
Another interesting collection that I'm sure some of you already know is the Sweden Household Examination Books. Um, this is, it's not a new collection, but uh, we had significant uh, updates to this collection uh, in recent months. So a bit of background about this uh, content. Uh, these books were created and kept, kept by the Swedish Lutheran Church, uh, which was tasked with keeping the official records of the Swedish population until 1991. Each book or series of books represents, uh, I think, a three to ten year uh, uh, span within a parish. Each year until 18, uh, I think it was 1894, the parish priest would visit each home and, uh, and test everyone's knowledge of the catechism. And, and he would collect information about birth dates and marriages and deaths, uh, where people uh, had moved uh, to or from. Some of these books were very similar to what we call census records uh, in other countries. Actually, this collection uh, covers uh, every parish uh, in Sweden uh, uh, like a, a census-like uh, uh, documentation for every 10 years between 1880 and 1910. So 1880, 1890, 19, and 1910. Uh, these are four censuses uh, that were held during uh, that time in Sweden. By the way, after uh, 1984, the examination books were replaced by different type of records of the Church of Sweden which were used officially uh, to officially enumerate the population uh, from year to year. But the focus on examining uh, the knowledge of the catechism had been removed. So it, it, it wasn't uh, really uh, uh, the focus of those books after 1894, uh, uh, but more uh, documenting the, the actual population. Um, and here at MyHeritage, we produced uh, an every name index to near, nearly 8 million images in total uh, that were provided to us by our Swedish partner, which is called Archive Dig Digital. It's also important uh, for me to say that this is one of the greatest collections you can find, really. Like, uh, if we had these records for every country uh, that we work in, um, I believe that our work as genealogists would have been much, much, much uh, easier. So for those with Swedish roots, th this is really a, a great collection. Um, the record you can see here uh, on the screen uh, is the record of, uh, of uh, Lars Magnus Ericsson, which was the founder of the Ericsson uh, uh, company. Uh, later bought by Sony. Uh, the record uh, that you can see here states that Ericsson lived in Stockholm County uh, in from 1903 to 1909. He married Hilda Carolina Simonson on April 6, uh, 1878. And they had two children uh, that you can see here uh, on the screen on the left in the household section. One of them is Gustav, and the other one is Lars Magnus. If you're interested uh, to learn more about our Scandinavian uh, content, uh, and more specifically on Danish collections, actually, I would encourage you guys to listen to, to the great webinar uh, that was a few months ago by, uh, by Mike Mansfield about Nordic records uh, that really covers this topic and, and discusses it in much greater uh, detail that I cannot get into uh, right now, uh, but you should try it. Another collection uh, that was uh, published uh, recently um, is, a, is an obituary collection from Canada um, from 1997 to 2017. It covers the 10 different provinces uh, in Canada. Most records, uh, as I said, are, uh, are from uh, a very recent uh, year span. And some of them, a smaller amount, is also from the previous 100 years. So I encourage also to try, if you have roots in Canada, to try this, this one out, uh, because not only uh, new data can be found there. Uh, 
uh, but the majority of records uh, of obituaries are in the, the last 20 years. Obituaries, and especially in this collection, uh, are, as you know, a great source for family research since they are usually very detailed and, and give a lot of info about other family members of the deceased and a, a lot of info about who was the, the deceased. Uh, so personally, I, I really like them. Sometimes you can find them even in, in newspapers. Um, so uh, I really encourage you to, to try them out. Uh, these specific records uh, were provided to us uh, uh, in a partnership we have with, with an institution called Drian uh, Genealogical uh, Institute in Quebec. Okay, just a few more items. Um, a quick update about what's happening in New York and New Jersey. So recent collections that we have added or updated from New York and New Jersey, uh, one of them, or maybe the, the most famous one, uh, is the Ellis Island and other New York passenger lists from 1820 to 1957. Uh, we have added, uh, I think it was, last month or two months ago, uh, 16.7 million records, uh, that most of them are uh, lists of, of crew lists and, uh, and detained aliens. Um, and uh, these, uh, these records are, uh, are quite new. We are also planning to publish another update this year. Uh, will probably happen closer to the end of the year with additional uh, 6 million uh, records. That, uh, that you can uh, find. We'll give more details about them uh, later. In uh, another uh, set of, uh, of collections uh, we recently published and will continue to publish uh, records from, from there uh, was received by uh, the great organization called Reclaim the Records. They are doing an, an amazing job uh, to get more and more um, content uh, out to the public. Uh, and we have added, uh, in partnership with them, four uh, different uh, collections, uh, the New York City Marriage License Index, uh, and uh, three uh, birth, marriage, and death indexes from the beginning of the 20th century. Okay, we are almost uh, done. Mm. Before that, I want to tell you a bit about what's coming. And we have some interesting uh, things coming. Uh, so first of all, we have the 1921 Canada Census. Uh, that uh, is a very interesting uh, census uh, coming probably in uh, September. The West Virginia Birth and Marriage Indexes. Uh, we just released recently. I didn't talk about it in the presentation because you really cannot uh, cover all uh, all collections, a nice uh, death index from West Virginia uh, with a lot of details about the deceased and we're, we are going to have two similar ones, uh, the birth and, and the marriage uh, index from, from the same uh, state, from West Virginia. We're also going to have, as I mentioned earlier, uh, three, uh, the three last uh, Danish uh, censuses and uh, and another interesting project that is just starting now is uh, death records from Brazil. We're going to see uh, the first set of records published uh, this year. Uh, it's not going to be too much, uh, around a million records, maybe two million, but uh, later in the next year or two, uh, we're going to, to have uh, many, many more records. And this project, we are doing it uh, completely on our own without any partner, so we invest a lot into it. Um, from Greece, we have actually two collections uh, coming up. One is from Sparta. It's, it's a marriage collection from Sparta. Um, and the second one is uh, from Corfu, uh, mostly focusing on, on Jewish uh, heritage. Um, I think it's, it's a marriage collection from Corfu, but I'm not sure. Um, and a part, and on top of that, uh, we are continuing to uh, release a lot of newspaper content. Uh, first of all, from the U.S., 
uh, that is going to continue uh, uh, dripping into the website uh, pretty much every month. I expect a few a few newspaper collections uh, from the U.S. and later on uh, we're going to have also newspapers from Europe, uh, France, Netherlands, and uh, Austria, and we have even a few more coming up. But that's a bit further out. Um, so th this is just, you know, the tip of the iceberg stuff that is going to come in, in the next few months. Um, and another thing, a, a question that I, I, I get quite often is how to find uh, what's new on SuperSearch. So uh, I, I showed you this link to browse the collection catalog earlier. Let me show it to you again. Sorry, just a second. Let me go back to the website. Okay. So, if I'll click the collection catalog, and it's also in the top navigation bar here, I will get to, to the collection catalog or the card catalog, as you know it from other websites. Um, and here, it's it's really, really easy to see what we have. In, in the top section, we normally have uh, the featured collections. Um, that These are collections that we we want to highlight. They are changed every now and then. Um, and down below, uh, you will see all other collections. Currently, it's sorted by number of records. But if you want to see what's new, uh, uh, I encourage you to sort it by last updated. And then uh, you'll be able to have a better uh, look at what's uh, what's new and when it was published and how many records. Um, it's also convenient to to explore and, and this is open even not to to data subscribers on on my heritage also for uh, from guests that came to the website for the first time uh, really to to showcase what uh, what exactly we have so you can really evaluate if you want to use the service or not. Uh, so, for example, you can always drill down uh, to, to specific uh, categories and see exactly which collections we have in each category. We are planning to add later on, uh, I'm not sure if, if it will happen in the next few months, but maybe a bit later, uh, an option to uh, select a list of collections from this collection catalog and, and perform a search only in them. I know many users want to have this uh, functionality. Uh, so plan uh, to add it uh, too. Uh, you can always uh, look for uh, specific uh, keywords that are interesting for you, like Jewish, for example, and see what uh, Jewish collections are there, um, and many other uh, things. It's also convenient to, to know exactly how uh, our uh, records are, are spread, uh, so you can see that the majority of records are coming from the U.S., but we have a really nice variety also in Europe and, and other places of the world. Uh, so I really encourage you to, to use this from time to time to see what's new, uh, and it's very uh, useful. Another option is always to keep track on our MyHeritage blog uh, at blog.myheritage.com where you can see uh, that we publish every, almost every month, one month or two months, uh, which uh, new historical records uh, were added with relevant details and examples. And this is uh, another way to, to see what's, uh, what's new. That's it. Um, I really enjoyed uh, talking to you guys or talking to myself today. <laughs> And uh, thank you for listening. And uh, Jeff, uh, if, if there are any questions, I would love uh, to answer. Yeah, great. Uh, thanks, thanks, Tal. I always love seeing the sneak peek of what's coming and, uh, and how to find what's new. At, and by the way, you, you taught me, uh, I got a good strategy of using that location as a keyword in the search instead of only in the location. That's back when you were talking about the newspapers. Uh, that, that opened my eyes to a new strategy. So really appreciated mm -hmm. that. 
Uh, I, I want to ask you a couple of questions here, and then uh, go over to door prizes, and then we'll we'll uh, we'll get to as many as we can in the few minutes we have left. Uh, so, talking about the newspapers, I have several people here asking um, how how do you decide about which newspaper locations to to digitize, and can we recommend to you certain uh, newspapers that we would like to have? digitized yes I, actually I, I would really love to hear uh, feedback of, of what newspapers uh, you would like to see oh really on the platform oh. yeah and uh, and and basically uh, in the US project uh, we started by by publishing uh, uh, the bigger um, sets of of, rec of records that we have like the bigger states okay um, but not necessarily necessarily like um, sometimes we saw a few states from the same uh, region or from the same area so we published them uh, together uh, but eventually and it will take a bit longer uh, we will have uh, I think a newspaper collection for each uh, state that Great. will also be updated uh, later I didn't mention by the way uh, and we have a very interesting uh, set coming from Boston Public Library um, some of some of the newspapers there were never been scanned before and we have i think only eight million uh records coming only from them huh. from there so basically the state of massachusetts is going to be uh the larger state in ter terms of newspapers uh, that we have um so that's interesting okay so if we have recommendations how do we get them to the right people there uh, you can always email to me uh, you can see my email on the screen. Um, okay. And and I will forward it to, to the relevant people. Okay. I've put that. Uh, I've put I put Tal's email address in your chat area. So for those of you that were asking about that, um, there you go. Um, thank you. I really appreciate that. And then um, the super search. Tell this is from Catherine. Is that available with? with a deluxe membership or a complete membership uh, what uh, a data membership tell us how we get access to it okay good so I, I didn't uh, talk about it uh, but yes uh, in order to search in super search uh, you can uh, do it uh, completely free without any subscription but in order to view uh, the records and, and to, to click on, on, on the results that you found you need to have a, a subscription a data subscription uh, is the most basic subscription that will give you access to all records and also uh, will uh, let you uh, see all record matches and confirm record matches, which is very useful. Okay. Um, and the data subscription normally costs about $10 a month. Um, and we ha have also the complete subscription, which, uh, which includes uh, both uh, the site subscription uh, that lets you uh, build your family tree and enlarge your family tree and get matches and instant discoveries and also um, uh, get all the data uh, that is covered by the data subscription. So it's basically a bundle. Okay. And here on my screen now, Tal, and everyone here, I've, I've just put the bullet points of uh, the differences between a family a premium plus and a data subscription. But I'm going to give away two of these now, the uh, one-year a complete plan and that'll get you everything so who wants one of these uh, look for that uh, hand raising <laughs> button there in your webinar control panel and I see you're finding it very quickly out there uh, and while you're while you're clicking let me let me ask you uh, let me ask you this question uh, several have been asking about is it possible to make corrections if we find them in the in the index or the in the transcriptions Yes, yeah, so we, we added uh, a few months ago uh, the feature that I showed in the beginning uh, for um, suggesting alternatives for uh, transcription errors in, in names. Uh, we plan at some point to expand this to, to other types of, uh, of fields uh, of records. We are already seeing a lot of, a lot of users uh, using it uh, to correct uh, names that were... Uh, it was transcribed incorrectly, uh, but we hope uh, that uh, we will get to also uh, expanding this feature uh, to support other uh, fields. Okay. 
Thank you. And uh, by the way, those asking about the MyHeritage Facebook group, I've just uh, put that link directly in your chat area so you can go there and join there. Okay, we're going to go and find out who our winners are. Our first winner here, I'm getting my pen out ready to write your name down. Uh, we have Tracy Turner. So Tracy, congrats. Uh, hope you enjoy it. I know you will. And let's go to our, our other winner. We have Mary Porter. So Mary, congratulations. Glad that you're here today. And by the way, Tal, uh, when you're talking, I think it was the name was Roscoe in, in that newspaper case study. Uh, one of yeah. our viewers here, they went out to the uh, to some other newspaper sites to try to find the same uh, data out there, and they couldn't find it there. So they were they were happy to see <laughs> that this was a unique thing to my heritage, and they're looking forward to using it here. Uh, so yes, actually, it's, it's it's something that uh, I didn't mention that most of the newspapers, I wouldn't say all of them, but uh, a big portion of them is is exclusive to my heritage. Oh, that's neat. So you're not just duplicating what else, what is already out there. You're you're doing new stuff. That's so, some of it, yeah. Thank you. That's that's nice to know. I appreciate it. Uh, lots of questions about the yearbooks and the newspapers. We've just got a few minutes. I found my aunt here. Uh, let me. Let me move this over here. I found this. Uh, this I found my aunt while you were talking, uh, and here's her picture. Uh, and it says she's radiating her little girlish charm. And so now I've got some some uh, way to kind of tease her, uh, thanks to that yearbook. So that was fun. Um, let me see. Uh, the, probably just a yes or a no question to this one. Uh, this one was asked a lot, uh, Tal. Uh, so you can. You can add the records we find to our tree, but can we also we can we can download the the records or the images that we see? Is that right? Of course, of course. Okay. Uh, in, in the full screen mode, when you click on the on on the button uh, to view the full screen, uh, you have on the top right uh, the option either to download or to print uh, the actual image. Okay. Uh, good. Thanks. And let's go to this question was asked quite a bit about the newspapers and and maybe you could walk me through this. I'm going to just pull pull this up on my screen um, and we're wondering is there a do we have the ability to uh, to like search the newspapers by date or uh, to find out if there's a certain newspaper for a certain town? How would how would I do that? Okay, good question. Um, and actually, I get this question uh, quite a lot. Oh, okay. Um, that's a, f a feature that was requested uh, recently uh, to have the ability to browse the newspaper collections by by title or by uh, or by town. Yeah. So today you can only you can only search uh, exact okay. on, uh, if you'll go to the newspaper section. Um, you can only search exact on a publication title or a publication place and after uh, you you apply the search, you'll be able to refine it on the left panel to a specific place uh, that is uh, relevant to you. Ah, okay. On on the bottom left uh, panel. However, we don't have yet uh, the ability to 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 give you guys uh, a browsing uh, uh, capability okay. uh, and and go through all the titles uh, available for each newspaper for each newspaper uh, collection i hope we will have it uh, later on uh, in yeah. the coming months okay well that's that's good to hear that you're listening to that feedback and we look forward to that now the same what is a little different maybe for the yearbooks and i've got quite a few asking about that uh, and I think I think you touched on it, but um, for Lana and Debbie and John, uh, if let, I'm gonna let's go into that yearbook collection, and I I find it by going uh, by doing it this way. It's usually always on top, so I'll click here. And so their question is, can I uh, can we search? Oh, where are they? Can we just search them by city? Can we search them by year? And that's you you can sit. You can search yeah the, the the school location by city in in a free text way. So if you will search Portland for example, yeah. And I can do say Portland in 1971. Do I have to yes. type in a name here, or can I just no, do no. a search like this? No, you don't have to. Okay. 
I'll try that. And even this will be more effective if you want to do this type of search. Maybe to start uh, by searching the other uh, yearbook collection that we have. As I, as I mentioned, we have the US. Scroll down a bit. Okay. Here, here on this page. So you see here the US yearbooks 18. Th that's the, the second version I was mentioning. Ah, this is how to find the free text uh, search. So Teresa and yes. others that were asking. Uh, this is exactly. this is where and we that, go. And okay. then what you can do is just see all the pages that appear in each uh, yearbook. So if you do the, the search that you wanted to do okay. earlier, so I'll go like this and type in Portland and hit search. Yeah, Madison. Okay. And then you can you can even filter uh, further to school location. Ah, or down here? here on the left. Okay. Oh, look at that. Oh, I forget there's other Portlands throughout the country. Yes. I didn't exactly. realize there's Texas and either Indiana. Either you should be more specific or just refine it from here. Yeah, I like that. It here, it's okay. the best uh, option. I like that. And even school, um, I'm hoping, yeah, Frank, so this is the, this is neat. I didn't, I didn't realize I could do this. So uh, this is how I browse all of the yearbooks by school, by year. Um, thank you for showing us that. Uh, yeah, this so Great. this is the one where my my dad and his siblings all went to. Uh, good. Nice. Well, um, yeah, Peggy. Yeah, Portland. <laughs> Portland brings up both Portland, Maine, and Portland, Oregon. So uh, good. Well, Peg, uh, Peggy also says sounds like a busy busy organization. Congrats to all of the hardworking people there. So. Uh, yeah, you're doing doing a, a real nice job. Keep us keep us posted. I guess going over to the blog, uh, the Facebook group are ways to stay updated. But um, Tal, before we officially say goodbye, is there anything else you'd like to leave us with? No, I, I really enjoyed the, today's session. I uh, hope you guys did as well. And uh, great to be here with you guys. Thank you very much, Jeff. Yeah, and. and, and and have a great day and thank you this was enjoyable i i enjoy getting uh i mean tal tal's the guy behind the scenes everyone and we have him here with us today so that was fun well uh so thanks to him and thanks to all of you wherever and whenever you are around the world thanks for making uh this webinar part of your day and remember life is short do genealogy first bye everyone bye tal thanks thank you bye bye <laughs>